Thank you po. May baby seated. So I'm not going to uh, most. Of, uh, I would say I'm about to teach this afternoon. Not going to preach. So in here in First Peter chapter five, verses number one to four. You know, times of persecutions demand that God's people have a. Uh, I would say adequate or uh, I would say spiritual leadership. So we have to understand that if judgment is to begin at God's house, here in First Peter chapter four, verse uh, seventeen. Shall we go there, please? First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, at us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, we have to understand that the house had to be better in order or it will fall apart. Now, as what I've said, no church is perfect. No. If there's a church that is perfect, di ko alam. That's impossible. This explains why here in the book of First Peter, here Peter wrote this very special message to the leaders of the church to encourage them to work faithfully in the work of God. Now, those uh, uh, people who are running away with the problems or when it comes to a difficulty are only proving that these people are not really... Uh, uh, true of what they are doing for the Lord. Because whether we have a problem or not, you have to stick there. Amen? And see how God will work in the midst of troubles. Amen? You have to stick with it. Stick with that, uh, that path. Stick with that course that God had prepared to us. That's why in John chapter 12, verse number 12 to 14, shall we go there, please? Okay. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 10, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse number 12 to 14. Okay, thank you. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. See the difference? No? Those hireling and uh, people that were really called by God. Now, I grew up in a uh, church where uh, I would say uh, we hire pastors. Okay? We hire pastors for the office, for that office, and then we, our church will just uh, provide everything for that pastor. I grew up in a church where the, uh, the one that has the power are the deacons. No? Uh, our pastor knows about that, about that case. So, uh, I grew up in the church, so uh, I can say that it's really difficult. Because of small problems that may enter inside a particular church, that particular pastor will just leave that work. So, it's really difficult. That's why here, it is very important that the New Testament assemblies were organized under the leadership. Uh, here in our church, we have... Uh, pastor, and we also have the deacons here in the church. So the words here, elder, here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, but we're not going to go there anymore, and Acts, let's proceed to Acts chapter 20, verse 17. Acts 20, 17, the Bible tells us, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Take, underline the word there, elders, and in verse 28 of the same chapter, the Bible tells us, Take heed therefore unto your jobs and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, the words elder and bishop refer to the same office. 
Now, these are only designation. The word bishop here, or translated as the overseer in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, as what we read a while ago, it is also the title that is also applied to Jesus Christ in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Now, the elders here refers to the maturity of the officer and the bishop here refers to the responsibility of the office. Although the, here, also what we can also see here is that the word pastor, which also means the shepherd, is another title for this same office in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Let us go there, please. Now, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, but there's, why, why are we studying this? I just want you to know, okay, that the office of the pastor is not an easy work. Amen? It is a great task. And it is a great work. And a great responsibility. That's why our duty as the ship and the members of the church to pray for our pastor. Now, let's continue here. The elders were appointed to the office in Acts chapter 14, verse 23. So, now we, we did that uh, the last time here when we uh, prayed for some deacons, although some were uh, the hmm. Okay. But again, apparently each organization had the privilege of voting of qualified men. That's why in the uh, New Testament, when they uh, uh, I had those uh, deacons, they really prayed to God. No? By looking at also their uh, characters at the same time. So Peter here was concerned. Okay? Concerned that the leadership in the local churches be at its best. Now, let me repeat this once again. No perfect church. But we're trying our best that what we're doing is always in the line, always in accordance to the will of God. Amen. So when the fire trial would come, so the believers in the assemblies would look to the elders for encouragement and direction. That's why I told you a while ago, Paul, that the work of a pastor or a shepherd, an elder, is not an easy job. Take note, you are taking those people okay, under your hands. Take note that those people are people of God. No? With different attitudes. With different, uh, 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 I would say, backgrounds. You're going to deal with that. Now, here in verse 1, the Bible tells us, let's go there. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now, number one characteristic of a shepherd, a shepherd must have a personal experience with Christ. Amen? A personal experience with Christ. Now, Peter did not hear, we're going to take a look in this verse, Peter did not actually introduce himself in this letter as an apostle or also known as a great spiritual leader but he simply what as an another elder however he did also mention the fact that he had personally witnessed Christ suffering now we can see that in the book of Matthew chapter 26 so the Greek word here uh, let's proceed here there Matthew 26 36 please let's proceed there Matthew 26, 36. And then cometh Jesus with them unto the place of Gethsemane and say unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray. You know the story what happened. Now, I, what I'm trying to say is that the witness. Okay? So, the Greek word here translated as the witness gives also our uh, English word for the word martyr. Now, what comes into your mind when you say the word martyr? Now, we think of a, a person, or I would say those disciples who, give, who gave their lives to 
Jesus Christ. But actually, when we say uh, martyr here, simply means a witness who tells what has or what he has been or what he has seen and heard about Jesus. Now, it is interesting here also to understand here in First Peter chapter five verse one in the light of Peter's uh, personal uh, experiences with Christ. Now, uh, here in verse one we can see how uh, he led us uh, with his experience. Starting from Gethsemane, going to Calvary. When he said here, uh, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Okay, the glory that shall be revealed here reminds us of what Peter experienced during uh, with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, everybody knows that, right? Now let's proceed there to Matthew uh, 17, 1 to 5. Now let's see what happened here. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, the transfiguration here, the Lord Jesus Christ, this was a, <coughs> I'm sorry, the effect, okay, the effect was uh, extremely uh, striking here. It is because Jesus became so bright in appearance, right? Okay? He, he was so bright in appearance. So the emphasis also here is in First Peter chapter five verse two. Let's go there. When he said, "Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind." Now, on the shepherd and the sheep certainly brings to mind here of what the Lord Jesus Christ. Admonished to Peter in John 21 15 to 17. So here it is also a warning in first Peter chapter uh, same book, same chapters, but in verse 3, lording over it. So the saints reminds us of Christ's lesson about greatness. You know, this one talking about greatness. Okay. So, as well as the other times that he taught his disciples about humility, what Christ did was that here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, clothe with what? Humility. Amen? And be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Now, this is what Jesus Christ did when he washed the apostles' feet. In John chapter 13, Verses number 1 to 17. That's why the warning about Satan in 1 Peter chapter 8 parallels our Lord's warning to Peter that Satan was going to what? Sift. Okay? Sift him and the other apostles if they are not careful. That's why Peter did not heed to that warning. And what happened to him? He ended up denying the Lord three times. We have to be, to be careful. Why? We are the target of the enemy. He doesn't want us to be, uh, to be successful. He doesn't want us to, uh, uh, to please God in what we are doing. No, it is interesting also to note that the verb here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Let's go there, please. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that Ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. You can also underline that later on. Establish, strengthen, 
settle you. The word there, or the phrase there, make perfect, is also translated as mending the nets. Okay? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 21, it is also the account to call the four fishermen into the Lord's service. That's why it's such a great blessing to, be, uh, to work in the Lord's vineyard. Amen? It's such an honor. In other words here, Peter wrote these words, inspired by the Spirit of God out of his personal experience with Jesus Christ. And also his growing relationship with Christ that made it possible for him to minister effectively to God's people. That's why I pray for the man of God. Pray for him. No, hindi yan si Superman. Oh, nalulungkot din yan, nasasaktan din yan. Kagaya natin. The pastor of the local assembly must be a man who walks with God and who is growing in his spiritual life. This is what Apostle Paul said. Uh, uh, this is what Apostle Paul admonished to the young, uh, to young Timothy in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 15 to meditate upon these things give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all so the word there profiting here originally means the pioneer advance it means that the minister must constantly be moving into new territories of study hindi lang nakafocus sa isang uh, pag-aaral. Maraming pinag-aaralan. Amen? Achievement and also especially for the growth of each every one of us. That's why if the, el- the leaders of the church are not moving forward, then the church will not move forward. That's why you have to acknowledge and recognize the effort of those uh, leaders who are standing in front, teaching, uh, uh, nurturing, uh, Admonishing us, strengthening us, encouraging us through the Word of God. Amen. We're not choosing who is the one who will stand behind the puppet and listen, and then if you don't want to uh, the preacher, we are not going to listen at all. No. That's why from time to time, whoever stands here in front, the blue notes ako, nakikinig ako. If you want some notes, sabihin nila sa akin. That's five dollars per copy. Okay? Now, sometimes God permits trials to come to the church so that people will force to uh, grow and discover new truths and new opportunities. During this pandemic, we've seen the great opportunity along the way. Amen? We trusted God more And we became closer to God more during that pandemic. That's why it is also very important that we, as the people of God, will also participate in helping the work of God in this place. We're not just spectators who will just wait for the great outcome of the church. And then, ganun tayo minsan, nakakalungkot eh. That's why if you have a blessing, share. Amen. We're not forcing people to give, in, he, to give here. But of course, automatic naman yan eh. Amen? If you really love the work of God, then the share. Amen? Hindi na in-announce yun. Alam mo na dapat ang yung ginagawa. That's why certainly Peter grew in his spiritual experience as he suffered for Christ. In the city of Jerusalem. He was not perfect by any means. In fact, Paul had to rebuke him for his inconsistency. Remember what happened, right? In Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 21, when Paul confronted with Peter's dealing with the Gentiles. Now, we're not going to go there anymore. But Peter was yielded to Christ and willing to learn. All that God had for him. This is very important for us. That we have those willingness to learn. That's why it is also very important that we, 
Ourselves must be humble. We have to humble ourselves in front okay, of God. Willingness to learn from His Word. That's why cultivate a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and share what He gives you to others. That way, all of us will grow together. Amen? Another thing, verses 2 to 3. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Verse 3, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Not only a personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ, but also a compassionate concern for God's sheep. A compassionate concern for God's sheep. So the image of the flock here is often used in the Bible. And it is very instructive. Uh, let's uh, see Psalms 23. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's proceed right away to Luke chapter 15, 4 to 6. Luke chapter 15, 4 to 6. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. No? That's how God is working with us. Amen? We sometimes lost on the course, but God will try to find a way for us to return in that right course. We do not... Uh, uh, notice sometimes, but God is already carrying us on His shoulders. Amen? That's why God has never forsaken each every one of us. Here in verse 5, And when He hath found it, He layeth it on His shoulders, rejoicing. In verse 6, And when He cometh home, He calleth together His friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Remember that uh, we were once stray sheep. Wandering toward ruin, but the good shepherd, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, found us and restored us to the fold. It's such a great blessing, amen? That's why sheep are clean animals, unlike dogs. Uh, 2 Peter 2.22 but it is uh, happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned into his own vomit again and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire this is a, that's the difference here remember that the sheep tend to flock together amen the uh, sheep tend to flock together that's why the same thing as God's people we need to be together. Amen? That's why this unity or misunderstanding is not the will of God. But sad to say, because of others' selfish motives, okay, and their own uh, motives that destroys a particular local church of God. As, as simply as that. Why? Because of their greediness. Because of their uh, jealousy. Because of their hate. Because of that hatred deep within. That's why right. sheep are notoriously ignorant and prone to wander away if they do not follow the sheep. Thanks be to God. Okay? In this church, someone, our pastor with the grace of God is leading us Amen? Instructing us through the word of God. Okay? Take note that the sheep are defenseless. Okay? They cannot defend themselves. And for the most part, they need shepherd to what? 
to protect them. Psalms 23 verse 4, a very familiar verse. And most of you have memorized this one. Yea, though, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, what? They comfort me. That's why sheep are very useful animals. Now, Jewish shepherds tended their sheep, okay, not for meat, which would have been costly, but for wool, for milk, and also lambs at the same time. That's why God's people should be useful to Him and certainly ought to what? Reproduce themselves by what? Winning other people to Christ. That's our goal. That's our motive. That's the reason why we are going to the villages to instruct, to, to propagate the gospel in the sowing fields of Cambodia. Why? Sheep, we were used for sacrifices. And also we ought to sacrifice. But to be what? Living sacrifices as well. Doing the will of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know what passage of Romans 12, 1 and 2? Also a very familiar verse. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's why Peter here reminded to the leaders of their God-given responsibility. Let's go back again to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Okay? Feed the flock of God. Simply means what? Well, it means the shepherd for to care for. The, the shepherd had many tasks to perform in carrying the, the flock. And he had to protect the sheep from the thieves and the marauders. The marauders, those are uh, uh, a group of people or animals that goes from one place to another in order to kill and to steal. Or to destroy. It's not easy. The pastor's job to protect God's people from those who want to spoil the flock. Eh, napasukan tayo eh. Really sad. But we cannot avoid that. What are we going to do now? To be united. And to focus and do the purpose of God in our lives. It isn't easy. It's really painful. But we have to face it. The Lord is always on our side. Now, sometimes the sheep do not like it when their shepherd rebukes them or warns them. Yung iba ayaw mo pagsabihan eh. And that's not right. Amen? If you're truly a, I would say a child of God, then you have to listen to the instructions. Knowing that those things, especially it came from the Word of God, is for your own good. At ayaw, lumalaban tayo eh. Ayaw natin. Why? Because of our pride. A faithful shepherd not only protected his flock, but he also led them from pasture to pasture. Okay? If you could remember, I shared this before when I preached about Psalm 23. So that they might be, uh, uh, I mean, adequately fed in those green pastures. The shepherd always went before the flock. Take note. And search out the land so that there will be nothing there to harm his flock. In the Old Testament times, the, the shepherd tried to check the snakes, if there are snakes, if there are pits, and if there are poisonous plants and dangerous animals ahead. That's the work of the shepherd. 
And the same thing as what the pastors are doing in the present right now. But sad to say, others did not recognize that. What the men of God are doing in their lives. Lagi na lang palaban. Di ba? So how important it is for the pastors to lead their people into the green pastures of the Word of God so that they might feed themselves and grow. That's why sometimes it was necessary for a shepherd to what? Seek out wayward sheep. Those uh, kind of sheep that are just open, uh, changing their behavior and then they are difficult to control. There are people who are like that. Amen? Bumabanat na yung mga leaders to teach the Word of God, to direct them into the right pasture, but still they don't want to listen. They try to reject and try to make their own way for them to survive. Okay? That's why the shepherds or those leaders who were given the task to uh, preach the Word of God will give attention to these people. Now, Jesus preached also to great multitudes, but he took time to what? To chat or to talk with Nicodemus and also to the woman at the well in John chapter 4 and others who had spiritually needs. Amen? That's why Paul also ministered to people personally in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, and loved them dearly. Amen? That's why it's really true that the job of a shepherd is great. Kasi, ang mindset kasi, minsan ang iba, eh gusto ko rin mapag-long sleeve. As long as you live. Di ba? Gusto ko rin na magkaroon ng barong. Barong Bisaya. Ha? Barong Tagalog. No? Amerikana. Gusto ko rin magkaganyan. No. It's not an easy job. It's not an easy task. That's why if a sheep is too rebellious, the sheep may have to discipline him in some way. Kaya nga, in the Old Testament times, the, those sheep na talagang hindi sumusunod, okay? pinipilayan yun. Pinipilayan. They've been doing that. At kinakarga nila. Dinadala sa fold. That's the work. The shepherd may have to discipline him in some way. If a sheep, if a sheep has a special need, the sheep might carry it in his arms next to his heart. Amen? And at the close of the day, the faithful shepherd would examine the sheep to see if it needed special attention. He would anoint those bruises with the healing oil and remove also those briars at the same time. That's what the shepherd is doing. Amen? Hold on. Laban lang, laban. Amen? <laughs> A good shepherd would know each of his sheep by name and would understand the special traits of each one. Amen? So it is not an easy thing to be a faithful shepherd of God's sheep because it is a task that never ends and, it, and that demands what? Supernatural power from God, assistance and direction and grace from God at the same time. Amen? That's why may mga pastor na talagang nag sila. Nagkukulapse. Yung former pastor namin, Sister Lily, nagkasakit yun. And for six months, he did not preach. It's not an easy job. Pray for them. Hindi mo binabanat ang patalikod. Minamahal mo. Why? Because they've been given to you by God. Amen? 
But sad to say, other people didn't recognize and acknowledge that. Because thinking that they can stand behind the pulpit and also preach. So what? Take note. What makes it even more challenging is that the fact that the flock is not the shepherds. It is God's. Amen? It is God's flock. Acts 20.28, 20, we've read that a while ago. Purchased by the blood, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why the pastor must be, must be careful how he ministers God's sheep. Because one day, we will have to give an account for everything. But not only that, even the sheep will also one day give an account of how they have obeyed their spiritual leaders. Hebrews 13, 17. Amen? Give, give and take dapat eh. Amen? Iba talaga hindi sumusunod. So both shepherds and sheep have a great responsibility for each other. Amen? We are simply what? To obey those who rule over us. When speaking to authority of God's word, leaders do have a right to tell us how to live and walk after God. This is what the verse is telling us. Not only to feed the flock, but also take the oversight. The word bishop also means to overseer. I uh, means overseer. One who looks over for the purpose of leading. That's why you will notice that the shepherd is both what? Among. And also at the same time, over. And this creates uh, some problems uh, if the sheep do not understand it. Why? Because he is one of the sheep. The pastor is also among the members of the flock. But, listen to me very carefully. He is called to be a leader. The pastor is over the flock. This is the thing that we have to understand as well. Some people try to emphasize among. Di kasama kasi natin yan. And if you to follow the leader. Amen? To follow the, that if you to follow the authority of the shepherd. And others want to put the pastor on the pedestal sometimes and make him a super saint. <laughs> I was uh, reading uh, some of the uh, events on the Facebook and it really scares me. Uh, I shared it to pastor last time. I think I said it during our Sunday school. Really scary. Amen. Hindi pa nga nakabangon yung iba. Meron ng Giving. Di pa nakabangon, ha? May pandemic. in na naman yung mm, mm. Really sad. Really sad. That's why we have to understand that the effective leader needs both relationship. Relationships, I mean, he must be among his people so that he can get to know them their needs and also their problems and he needs to be over his people so he can lead them and help them solve their problems. Amen? So there must be no conflict between pastoring and preaching because there are both what? Ministries of faithful shepherd. The preacher needs to be pastor so he can apply the word to the needs of the people. Also, the pastor needs to be a preacher so that he can have authority when he shares in their daily needs and problems. Amen? Preaching is always personal. Lagi lang pinapatamahan ni pastor. Hey, grow up. Amen? As you continue serving the Lord, dapat nagkaroon tayo ng development from time to time. Hindi yung pababa. Amen? Namen, namention lang yung nagiging guilty ka. Nasabihin ka na hindi nagbibigay, nagagalit ka. Then do your responsibility. Tapos. Ganun lang naman eh. Amen? 
this loving heart if we are really following the, the word of God and also if we are doing in accordance to His will. Wala namang mahirap eh. Tayo lang naman pinahirapan ng sarili natin. Ganun na naman kasimple. Ayun? So the pastor is not a religious lecturer or leaders are not religious lecturer who weekly passes among information about the Bible. He is a shepherd who knows his people and seeks to help them through the word. That's why being spiritual leader of a flock has, it, has its uh, dangers as well. That's why continue to pray for them. That's why Peter here pointed out some of those sins that the elders must avoid. Laziness. Not by constraint, but willingly. This is what the Bible tells us. His ministry must not be a job that he has to perform. He should do God's will from his heart. Amen? According to uh, Dr. George W. Uh, Truett, okay? he is a pastor of uh, First Baptist Church in Dallas for nearly 50 years. Uh, he was asked to accept other position other than pastoring. But you know what he said? I have sought and found a pastor's heart. When a man has a pastor's heart or a leader's heart, he loves the sheep and serves them because he wants to, not because he has to. Amen? That's why, not only that, next to laziness, and also, the shepherd must also be aware. Those leaders who are uh, given the, who were given the task to preach the word of God must be aware also of covetousness, not of filthy lucre. You know the meaning of this, but of a ready mind. That's why it is perfectly proper for the for the church. It is our job to assist our pastor financially. Nandito yun eh, Day? Nandito yan. 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 18. Let's go there, please. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treateth out of the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. And they ought to be as fair and generous as possible. But again, but making money must not be the main motive in the ministry. Take note on that. Okay. Mababasa natin, nakakalungkot. Kaya nga sinabi ko sa'yo, hindi pa nakabangon yung mga ship. Turo na ng mm-mm. Kakalungkot. No? That's why... Paul stressed this in uh, the qualification. No? Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not given to filthy lucre. He must not be a lover of money nor devote himself to pursuing money. Amen? So because of the family or church situation, ito yung nakakalungkot. And I hope this will not happen. Pero nangyayari talaga ito. Some pastors have to engage in outside employment. Moonlighting. Why? Take note that Paul also was a tent maker. So there is no disgrace about this. Okay? But as soon as possible, the members of the church ought to relieve their pastor of outside employment so he can devote himself fully to the ministry of the word. Amen? Uh, I don't know if you will believe me, but I know a pastor who is selling taho at night just to provide the needs of his family. It's really sad, but it's happening. I know some pastors who are uh, uh, driving uh, tricycles also at night and that, that, uh, during daytime, uh, Bible study, everything. And at night, they're driving a tricycle 
just to provide the needs of their family. And I hope this will not happen. We have to help them, especially kung kaya naman ng church. Amen? To provide the needs for the men of God. Especially if these people are working faithfully in the Word of God and serving the Word faithfully together with their families. Amen? So, also, pastors need to be aware of getting involved in money-making schemes and detour them from their ministry. When we went back to the Philippines, uh, that was 2012. Alive pala tayo, no? Happy viewing. Yung, ano ba yun? One goal. Ah, dami. Daming nadali dun. Why? Because if you have been called by God, no need, no, no, there's no need for you to do these things. Amen? Gold mining. Amen? It's really sad. Oh, don't get me wrong. But again, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2, verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Take note, those uh, are people who, men of God, who surrender their lives for the ministry. Okay. Try to give up everything. Let's love them. Support them. Amen? So, again, not only that, be an example to the flock. Here in verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an examples to the flock. So the contrast between, is between dictatorship and leadership. So you cannot drive sheep, but you must go before them and lead them. Amen? No, uh, again, just don't get me wrong. Okay? Me and my wife, we, uh, we were trained into a... Uh, but again, I'm so thankful for that. I'm still thankful for that. Although, sobra, napaka sobra, alam na lang, alam na Sister Belto ni Pastor, what I'm talking about. Uh, napaka sobra, but I'm so thankful to God sa training na yun na binigay sa amin. And, yun ang nagpatibay sa amin ng loob. Na may mag-asawa. And by the grace of God. Amen? Uh, dumating, dumating sa punto na ay, lagi kaming long sleeve doon, white ito, hindi ito, ay, ito nagkataon lang, nagkataon kasi malamig nagka long sleeve ako pero lagi kaming ganito kaya bleed na bleed sister Lily lagi ako naka-white dati di niya alam, isa lang yung damit ko white well, thanks be to God for all those train, uh, trainings that we had but again, what happened here is that uh Nakakalungkot minsan na pati yung nililigawan mo o kukontrolin dapat ito. No? E, ito, ito dapat manligaw sa'yo. Minsan tatambo ako eh. Maalala ko eh. Ayaw sa akin kasi Sister Lily. Hindi. Uh, live pala tayo. Kinalimutan ko na yan. Tapos ng lahat. But again, we have to understand that uh, it has been well said that church needs leaders who serve and servants who lead. Amen? But ito kasi nangyayari minsan eh. The trouble today is that we have too many celebrities but not enough servants. Amen? Tama yun eh. Dapat merong servants, uh, servants conference, no? Dapat merong ganun pero parang wala. <laughs> no. Anyway, so it is by being an example that the shepherd solves the tension between among the sheep and over the sheep. Although it's really hard, it's not easy. It really takes time and needs more fervent prayer. People are willing to follow a leader who practices what he preaches and gives them good example to imitate. But again, balik tayo doon. Wala din perfect leader. Sasabihin ko sa inyo. Wala. 
That's why our our job, our responsibility is to help those leaders that God has given to us. Pray for them. Walang perfect. Meron mang perfect, siguro nasa langit ka na. Nung time na yun. No one is perfect. Kaya ba Alex yun na? Nobody is perfect. That's why Peter was not changing the image when he called the church God's heritage here. So, Psalm 33 verse 12. Uh, let's, I'm going to make it fast. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Amen? So, each leader has his own flock to care for. I, I really like this. But the sheep all belong to the one flock of which Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. Amen? The Lord assigns his workers to the places of his choosing, and we must all be submissive to him. I, I like this. Please listen very carefully. There is no competition. Amen? In the work of God, when you are serving in the will of God. Amen. Aliit naman namin. No. No, no, no. There's no competition in the work of God. When you know that you are serving in the will of God. I like that. Amen. And lastly, I will make it fast. A passion to please Christ alone. Now, here in verse 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So, since this is the epistle of hope, so Peter brought it once again, the promise of the Lord's return here. So his coming is an encouragement in sufferings. Amen? There's an encouragement. Amen? Knowing that one day God will uh, uh, come once again and uh, take his children. And a motivation to be faithful in our service towards him. Amen? That's why if a pastor or leaders or preachers, their job is to please people, then he will have a disappointing and difficulty ministry. Take note of that. It must be hard to keep all these people happy if his goal is to what? Please people. No. We have to please Christ alone. Amen. Amen. Please Christ alone in your lives. And Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who died for the sheep. Everybody knows that. Okay? In John 10, 11. Shall we go there please? In John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now take note of this. That the good shepherd sacrifices for the sheep. The good shepherd knows the sheep and the good shepherd is known by his sheep. So, shepherd who lives for the sheep and also the chief shepherd who comes for the sheep. Now, there were always uh, several kinds of crowns in those days. But again, Peter, what Peter mentioned was the athlete's crown. Usually a garland here of leaves or flowers that would quickly fade away. But again here, the faithful pastor's crown is a crown of glory, a perfect reward for an inheritance that will never fade away in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. That's why today a Christian worker may labor in different kinds of rewards. Some work to build uh, empires, some work to strive for the applause of men, and others are still seeking for the promotion and all of these things will just fade away. Take note of that. The only reward we ought to strive for is what? If we can hear the praise, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that is the unfading crown of glory that goes with it. Amen? So, again, we, will, should, not, uh, we should not uh, have the desire for personal glory. Amen? When we see Jesus Christ face to face. That's why I don't know if others, uh, so others may, may not agree with me, 
But again, I am against those uh, uh, preachers who are involving themselves in politics. Why? Because being the servant of God is already the highest calling. Amen? So everything in the local churches, uh, church rises or falls with leadership. So no matter, no matter how large or small a fellowship might be, the leaders must always be Christians, saved, each with a personal relationship with Christ and a compassionate concern for the people and what? A passion to please Christ. Take note, before we end, we lead by serving and we serve by suffering. And this is the way Jesus did it. And this is the only way that truly glorifies him. We will end up a verse here in 1 Corinthians 15.10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So Paul gave the grace of God all the credit. Amen? For the changes of, for, of his life. He was a changed man. Amen. He was a changed man. Forgiven, cleansed, full of love. When once again he was full of hate. But he, know, he knew this was not his own accomplishment. But it was the work of God in his life. So again, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Continue to pray for the pastor. Continue to, play, uh, to pray for the leaders. They've been doing the task that is an ending. It's not an easy job. So we as the sheep of God, we have to pray for them and support them. And don't forget that in everything that we're doing, It should glorify God. Let God be pleased in your life. Let God be the one to be exalted in your life and not yourselves. Always be faithful in serving Him for the rest of your life. Shall we all stand and let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord God, for your goodness.